Hello everyone, today I'll be walking you through 5 tips and tricks to make you a better colorist in DaVinci Resolve. So here in my project I have a simple grade setup with exposure done in the HDR wheels to get a nice even image, CST that takes my footage from S-Log3, s gamma 3 Cine to Airy, and then a LUT. You can download for free in the description if you want. It's made for Airy Log C and it takes it to Codec 2383 and that looks very nice in my opinion. So my first tip to you is to use the qualifiers, but not in the way you would expect to use a qualifier. So in the Finch Resolve, when you select your qualifier in the bottom left here, you'll notice when you hover over footage that on the scope in the bottom right here, you'll see that you can identify certain areas in your image. So you want to say where this orange is in the image, you can see it puts circles around it. And for example, with colors, it's very useful to see where skin tones lay because you have a skin tone indicator right here that you can turn on in here, skin tone indicator. And then when you find a skin tone in the shot, for example, right now there's no skin tone, but let's put this building, you can see it's not in the right place. Then you can adjust it to move it over to the right place in your scope. So my second tip is to actually use HDR wheels and log wheels. And the main reason for that is because you can selectively adjust an area of your image very precisely. So if we quickly remove the adjustments to the exposure on this shot, take it back to normal, we'll see it's a bit overexposed, for example, and we want this to look better. So we go to our primaries, and for example, we would lower the offset to a nice area. Let's grab the waveform to a nice area, and we'll end up somewhere here, which looks fine. But now we, let's say selectively, we don't want to change anything about the image, but the highlights. In this section, you would either use the highlights, which as you can see on the scopes, changes way more than just the highlights. Let's say you would use the gain. It again changes way more than just the highlights. So what you can do is go to your log wheels, grab your highlights, and you'll notice that it only affects your highlights. Because the log wheels keep into account your timeline color space where you're working in, and they will look at what area is designated as a highlight within that color profile. So if we do this behind the CST, within Airy Log, let's clean this up, uh, oop, let's clean up the node graph, and let's do it here, you'll notice that it very nicely rolls off the highlights into a nice tone. That's one way of doing it with the log wheels, but also to get even more control you can go into the HDR wheels, which gives you not only black, dark, shadow, light, highlight and specular control over your image, and even then you can customize that to be more precise to your needs. So for example here I just want to change a little bit of the highlights here. I grab the highlights and you'll see on the scopes and the right how precise it edits what is a highlight and what is not. And then lights do a little bit more obviously. And then we can go down here to lower the shadows a little bit to make them the darks a little bit darker. Lower the shadows slightly. And then we went from this to this. And we upped our dynamic range by a lot. So my third tip that might seem very obvious to a lot of people is to use masks. With masks you can very selectively choose which area gets darker again, but even more selective because you can make it in any area of the footage you want. So let's add a node, add node, add parallel to the exposure node, let's clean up the node graph, let's create the gradient mask here in the sky for example, and we lower the highlights. This way, we can selectively say, hey, lower the highlights, but only in this area of the footage, which makes it much more precise. And you can do a lot of things with it, especially when it comes to skin tones and shadows and highlight areas. Now my fourth tip is to use as many nodes as you can. Not just because you can, but to separate all your adjustments into separate nodes. This might seem excessive and it's not actually needed to get your desired results, but it gives you a good overview of what you've done. So if a client comes to you, or you yourself decide you want to change something, you can go back into your node tree and see, hey, here I've done the exposure. This is my CSD, this is my LUT. And if I do white balance, 
I add a node behind it, I add serial, and then I call it white balance. This is why DaVinci Resolve in particular is very powerful, because you have a node-based system. And in more layer-based systems like Premiere Pro or other programs, you cannot really achieve this. So make use of this, because this is one of the main reasons you're obviously color grading within DaVinci Resolve. So my fifth and final tip is to know where in your color managed workflow to do which adjustment. Obviously there's difference per person where they do it, but in my opinion, there's a pretty simple rule of thumb you can follow, which is simple. So before the CST, so before you take it out of your log into your working space or output profile, you want to do basic adjustments. So exposure, white balance, saturation, things you can all do within your camera as well. So in my opinion, this also includes masks as I've shown before, because they go in parallel with your basic adjustment nodes. And then after the CSD, you want to do creative adjustments. But I want, in my opinion, in my workflow, I do it before I transform it from my working space into my final output color profile, which is Rec 709. So for example, if I want to change a specific color, I create a new node. Let's call it CW for color warper. Let's go into color warper. Let's use this tool. Let's say I want this color right here to be a little bit more green. Like in general, orange to be a little bit more green. And we pull it towards green, as you can see here. But we make this like this, for example, to get a nice curve in it. We get a little curve going. So it's not specifically a harsh change. And there we go. Now we can turn it on and off and we changed it. But we did it before the final output profile but after the first CSD where I transform it into my working space. Which in my case is Aerilogsy, but in other people's cases it can be GIF DaVinci Intermediate or Cineon Film Log for all that matters. So I hope you guys learned something in this video. This was a short one where I just gave some tips and tricks on how to become a better colorist and know your software better. And see you all next week.